Most aspiring developers make this one mistake, and that's not having a roadmap. A roadmap is extremely important if you want to actually reach your goals and know the topics you should be learning to eventually become, in this case, a Python developer. So in this video, I'm going to share with you not just one, not just two, but three Python roadmaps that actually work that will help you become a Python developer. Now, the three roadmaps I have cover the main things that you would do in Python. So we have data science, backend development, and DevOps and automation. And if you want a text-based version of these roadmaps, what you can do is simply click the link in the description. And if you sign up for my newsletter, I'll send it to you completely for free. So with that in mind, let's get into it and talk about these different roadmaps. Now, regardless of which topic interests you the most, there are a list of skills that are common to all of the roadmaps. So I want to start with those. Now, we're going to be begin with just basic Python or core Python skills. If you want to be a developer in any of these areas, then you need to be comfortable writing code in Python. You need to know things like if statements, functions, data types, loops, and all of those basics that you would learn in any beginner type tutorial like the hundreds that I have for free on this channel. Beyond that, you need to understand object-oriented programming. Things like classes, objects, dunder methods, normal methods, attributes, all of those things are important to understand specifically within Python. Next, I would highly recommend learning some more advanced Python features and deepening your understanding of the language. Things like context managers, decorators, generators, meta classes, iterators, all of these things are not necessary, but I highly recommend them and they just make you a much better developer with a deeper understanding. Beyond that, I'd recommend learning about threading, concurrency, and the global interpreter lock. Now, Python is a famously slow language, and I think it's important to understand why that's the case and how you can mitigate some of those concerns with things like threading, multiprocessing, and really understanding what the global interpreter lock is and why it applies to the language. Beyond that, I recommend learning some basic unit testing, so looking at the built-in unit test framework, as well as the PyTest module, which you can install. You don't need to be an expert, but it's something that you should have some basic familiarity with. Next, I definitely recommend looking at virtual environments and package management. So being familiar with something like Anaconda or VENV or PIP ENV or Poetry, just something where you can create an isolated environment to install your various Python dependencies and be familiar with how something like PIP works and what Python packages are. Next, for any developer, really any roadmap that you follow, you're going to need to know Git and version control. So understand the basic Git commands, know how to create a repository, make a pull request, make commits, switch branches, all of that fun stuff. Next, I do recommend understanding some basic Linux and bash scripting. You don't need to be a complete expert, but knowing the different commands in the terminal, being comfortable working in a non-graphical user interface, and just knowing kind of how to navigate your way through and use some basics like changing directories, making new files, deleting, searching, etc. And lastly, and this is a pretty big one, I would definitely recommend getting some basic database understanding. Knowing what a SQL or relational database is and when to use it compared to something like a NoSQL SQL database or a document store database. Again, you don't need to be an expert, but you want some familiarity so that you're comfortable with some of the more topics that come later in these specific roadmaps. So those are the core skills that you need to know. And if you're looking for a great resource to learn them, then definitely check out today's sponsor, Boot.dev. Now, Boot.dev is the ultimate platform for learning backend development in a way that's actually engaging. Unlike other courses, Boot.dev makes learning interactive and fun with hands-on coding in your browser instead of passive video watching. Plus, you can check out all of their content for free in guest mode. What makes boot.dev stand out is that you'll earn XP, unlock achievements, complete quests, and compete on a global leaderboard, making progress feel like leveling up in a game. Now, if you get stuck, Boots, the AI-powered bear wizard, will guide you with thought-provoking questions rather than just handing out the answers. Now, backend development also has serious earning potential, and according to Stack Overflow, the median backend developer in the US made over $100,000 in 2023. Now, Boot.dev helps you learn these skills the right way with real-world projects in Python and Go, and a focus on APIs, databases, data structures, and more. They also offer a 30-day no-questions-asked refund policy, 
course demos, and a Discord community for added support. Now, if you're serious about leveling up your backend skills or starting your journey towards becoming a backend developer today, then go to boot.dev and use my discount code TECHWITHTIM for 25% off your first year on the annual plan. So let's dive into it now with our data science roadmap. Again, if you want to access these roadmaps, you can do it for free from the link in the description. Now, the first thing that we need to look at as a data scientist is some essential libraries. So things like Num PI and pandas for data manipulation, and things like matplotlib and seaborn for data visualization. You'll also want to learn about data cleaning and pre-processing techniques because after all, a data scientist works with a lot of data. Next, you will want to know some math and statistics. You can get away without being an expert, but it's highly recommended to at least know some of the key terms. So learn probability and statistics, linear algebra, things like vectors, matrices, etc. And then even knowing a bit of calculus and optimization with things like gradients and derivatives can be quite useful to really deepen your understanding. Next, you want to start getting into some machine learning. So learning about libraries like scikit-learn, for example, for supervised and unsupervised learning, and learning about the core machine learning algorithms, things like linear regression, clustering with k-nearest neighbors or k-means, support vector machines, all of these things that really make up the foundation of machine learning. Beyond that, you need to learn about feature engineering and model evaluation and things like hyperparameter tuning. Next, we get into deep learning and AI. Once we've covered the core machine learning algorithms, it's time to get a bit more complex and get into deep learning. Now, here's where you're gonna start looking at frameworks like TensorFlow or PyTorch. Really, you can pick any one that you want, but you need to learn at least one of them. You wanna learn about things like neural networks, for example, and various different architectures that you can have with deep learning. Next, you wanna look at some natural language processing. So things like NLTK, this is a Python module, SPACY, SPAC, and things like transformers and using various hugging face open source models. Next, I also recommend learning a bit about computer vision, so things like OpenCV, YOLO, Detectron 2, and then even getting a little bit into LLMs and not necessarily making them or training them on your own, but understanding the architecture and how an LLM actually works. Now, there's obviously a lot of stuff that you can throw in here, but this is more focused on data science than necessarily becoming a machine learning or AI engineer. So as much as you wanna be familiar with these topics, you don't need to be a complete expert. It's more about how you work with data and the understanding you have about how the data is used further on in the process. Lastly, we have machine learning operations and deployment. Now, if you are someone who really wants to get dirty with the models, you want to build your own machine learning you know, techniques and models and all of those kinds of things, then you should know how to deploy them. So understanding things even like Flask or Fast API, Streamlit, Gradio for making things like inference servers or quick demos for working with your models can be quite useful. And then lastly, if you are going to do any continuous integration or deployment, you can use tools like AWS SageMaker and Vertex AI. Now here's where we can start branching into so many different topics, but this is a good core list of things that you should be looking into if you want to get into data science and machine learning in Python. And of course, there are many, many more that I cannot cover all in this video. So next we get into my personal favorite roadmap, which is for a backend developer specifically focused more on web development. Now this is where Python really shines. And the first thing you'll want to know here in this roadmap is your web development basics. So yes, you'll be working in Python, but you should understand HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. So you're at least comfortable reading the code and writing little snippets of it. Next, you're going to want to understand core networking methods and things like HTTP and APIs. So you should understand what a put request is, a patch request, what an endpoint is, what query parameters are, and how the internet works, at least on a surface level. Moving on, you're gonna to wanna to learn some various backend frameworks. I would recommend you start with something like Flask, this is the most lightweight, then move into something like Fast API, which is a bit more performant, and then lastly, get into Django, which is really a full stack framework that allows you to build a website completely from scratch, so both the front end and the back end, not just the API component, which the other two mostly focus on. Next, you're gonna get into databases and ORMs, and an ORM is an object relational mapping, and something that's very popular in Python 
have for working with your core databases. So you're going to want to learn definitely about SQL Alchemy. This is something that works with Flask, Fast API, etc. And then the Django ORM if you're working obviously in the Django framework. I would also recommend looking into Redis for things like caching and message queues. I would also look into some database optimization techniques and learn about things like indexing. After databases, what comes next is security, and this is extremely important, especially as a backend developer. So first, you're going to want to learn about things like JWT tokens and OAuth2, various ways of performing security via an API. Next, you want to look into API security, so things like rate limiting request, cross origin resource sharing or cores, and then CSRF. Next, you're going to want to look at hashing and encryption. So how do you securely store sensitive data like passwords, for example, in a database? Moving on after that, you're going to want to look into asynchronous programming and scalable backends. So this is where you want to learn about just async programming in general in Python. Really all developers should know this, but specifically more if you're going to be working as a developer or a web developer and looking at things like the async IO package. Next, you're going to look at things like Celery for building things like a task queue and then RabbitMQ or Kafta for things like message brokers. This can get a little bit complicated, but there's a few things you want to understand when it comes to scalability, especially if you want to land a higher paying job or qualifies for some more, let's call them prestige positions. Next, you are going to want to look into some cloud and DevOps. So as much as these should really be separate roles, backend developer compared to DevOps engineer, a lot of times companies do expect that backend developers have some experience here. So I've listed a few basic topics that you'll want to at least be familiar with. Now, the first is going to be Docker and Kubernetes for containerization of your application. Again, don't need to be an expert, but you should be familiar. Next, things like CI and CD pipelines with things like GitHub Actions or GitLab CI CD. After that, various AWS services or cloud providers. AWS is probably the most popular, but learning even about Azure or Google Cloud and understanding some of the main instances or services that they have. So things like EC2 instances, S3, Lambda functions, RDS, etc. Lastly, you're going to want to learn about monitoring and logging. You can use things like Prometheus for this. OK, I know this sounds like a lot of stuff. You obviously don't need to learn all of this in one or two weeks or even in a few months. It's a roadmap to last you for a long time and something you can keep working towards so you know you're making progress in the right direction. Anyways, that is for our back end web developers. Now let's move on to DevOps and automation. So we move on now to our automation and DevOps roadmap. Now, some of the skills here will be similar to those of a backend developer. For example, you would definitely want to know that last section I mentioned. So things like Docker and Kubernetes, CI and CD pipelines, AWS services, etc. And that's because as a DevOps engineer, your job is really to deploy software through using automation. So that's where a lot of these skills will come in. So let's dive into it. Now, first, you're going to want to know some scripting and automation techniques. So things like how to automate tasks using the OS module, the sub process module, the SHUtil module, all of which are built into Python. Next, I would recommend learning some basic web scraping for automation tasks, things like Selenium, Playwright, Beautiful Soup, at least be familiar with these frameworks. Next, things like API automation. So learning about the request module, Puppeteer, Postman, essentially how do you send and automate API requests to test your software. Next, we're going to get into infrastructure as code or IAC. Here is where you want to look at things like Terraform, whether that's on AWS, Google Cloud Platform or Azure, and then things like Ansible for server automation. Next, we move to CI and CD, which is a huge part of the job. So you want to know about things like Jenkins, for example, GitHub Actions, and again, that GitLab CI and CD pipeline. You also want to know about infrastructure monitoring. Again, things like Prometheus and maybe Grafana. Then we get into cloud networking. Now, here's where, again, you're going to want to be much more familiar with the cloud services, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Platform. It doesn't really matter which one you pick and every job will be using a different type of provider. So it's really just based on the kind of roles that you want to apply for and what they're mostly using. Next, we want to learn about things like load balancers, reverse proxies, things like Nginx and kind of how to scale our software and networking. Next, we want to know about serverless architecture, so things like AWS Lambda or GCP Cloud Functions. 
Lastly, we have cybersecurity and observability. Now, notably, I am not great in this section, so I have some things that I research, but if anyone in the comments has some more details, please leave them. So again, logging and monitoring, that's huge for cybersecurity. And next, things like security auditing and compliance. Now, if you work for big companies, governments, or kind of important software, a lot of times you will need to meet certain security requirements and you'll have rules and regulations that you'll need to follow. And the last topic I have on my list is incident response and recovery strategies. So things like how are you backing up the database? How do you recover from disasters? How do you respond to different instances? And all of those things that most people don't think about, but which are incredibly important, especially as you start scaling software and building really important systems. So there you go, guys. Those are my three roadmaps for Python developers that actually work. Again, if you want the text-based version of this, you can get it for free. Just click that link below and sign up for my newsletter and I'll send it to you right away. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.